Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mercer Health News. Our video topic today is lifestyle spending accounts. It is a really hot topic. We have had a lot of interest on the blog in lifestyle spending accounts, and I'm thrilled to have two clients here today to talk about their experience in this area of benefits. I'm joined by Kristen Bajorit, the Director of U.S. Benefits at Snyder Electric, and Glenn Haskell, the Benefits Director at New Balance. Welcome, both of you. Thank you for joining me today. So to get started, I would like to have each of you just share a little bit about your company's lifestyle account benefit. So Kristen, why don't you start and tell us about Snyder Electric? Sure, happy to. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks for having me. It's nice to be here. So our lifestyle spending account is actually, um, it has two components to it. So we have something that we call benefit box. And benefit box is something that we give our employees, if you think about, um, and I'm going to age myself a little bit, but if you think about old school flex cafeteria plans, right, we give each of our employees $500 annually that they can spend on certain benefits. Um, and that was rolled out in 2022. And then this past year, one of the things we did was introduce life planning accounts, life spending accounts, whatever you want to call them. And you can roll your, you can choose to put your benefit box into your life planning account. So that's how we fund it is employee choice from the benefit box. And then you can also fund it through um, our well-being cash, so the incentive plan. If you want to roll that money into your life planning account, you can do that as well. And so, Kristen, let me just ask you a question about that. So the funding for the accounts at Snyder Electric, was this new funding or did you kind of repurpose some other funding in order to support this? Yeah, that's a good question. We uh, we repurposed kind of some other funding. So I think a lot of people experienced this, right? When COVID hit, medical claims were not as high as maybe anticipated. So what we were able to do is take some of that money from that that anticipated claim spend and repurpose it into benefit bucks for employees. Okay. So I think that's an important distinction because I know a lot of times when we talk to clients, coming up with new money is often hard to do. And so um, um, that that's super helpful. So Glenn, tell us a little bit about the accounts that New Balance implemented. Sure. We have a $1,000 lifestyle account. We started them in, in January of 2022. Uh, we also have a $300 benefit for part-timers, those who work less than 20 hours per week. And it basically can be used for any, any expense associated with an associate's lifestyle. Um, and examples, yes, it would be gym memberships, of course, where some of the legacy funding came from. Um, but also a whole range of other activities that people have in their lifestyles. Interestingly, uh, veterinary and pet expense was is very popular. We do hair care, massage, all kinds of entertainment, sporting events, golf, tennis, skiing. It, it really, uh, you'd be hard pressed not to find a way to spend the, uh, the money. We even added uh, utility expenses recently in response to some uh, increased costs around that this past winter. So that's super interesting um, that you talk about the uses for your account. And of course, being um, a lifestyle company where, um, you know, your, your, um, your business is a lot about people having active lifestyles. That makes a lot of sense. Um, Kristen, you have taken a similar approach with some of the things that people can get reimbursement for from Snyder Electric. Isn't that correct? We have for some things, yes. So, for example, um, pet insurance, right? People often ask, do you have pet insurance? And this is a way just to be more flexible with how you can use that money. Um, you can do home and auto insurance. We also, um, we are focused on sustainability. So, and we make products for sustainability. So sustainability is a huge part of what you can reimburse yourself with the life premium account. So for example, um, if you want to save it for an EV charger or an EV car, um, Energy Star appliances, we have a list of our own Schneider Electric products that people can be re reimbursed for. Um, we've also taken, uh, or you can also be reimbursed for uh, student loans as well as uh, college coaching. So for example, if you have a kid who is maybe um, taking an ACT prep course, you could put that money toward the ACT prep course. 
So lots of flexibility. Um, could uh, could you just talk a bit, Kristen, about the administration of this benefit? Um, how how is the benefit administered? And and we'll we'll get Glenn to weigh in on that too, so everybody can hear maybe what some of the options are. Yes, yeah, so we are using our um, Ben Admin platform. So our Ben Admin administrator is also administering the LPA. We do not have a debit card though. It's it's reimbursement only at this point. So submit your claims and get reimbursed for it. Um, you make your election. So with the benefit box, you make your election during annual enrollment. And that's when you decide how you want to distribute your benefit box. So if people elect to go into the LPA, it'll get fed over. And then we have a connection with our well-being platform. So people can, when they go to redeem their well-being um, dollars, they can elect at any time during the year for it to roll into their LPA if that's what they want. Okay, and Glenn, how is the account administered at New Balance? Well, we have a third-party administrator who is who is administering the account, and so folks uh, incur their expenses, and they they submit their claims to the third-party administrator, who then basically tallies up the claims for the month, and at the end of each month, we get a file from the third-party administrator. Uh, indicating the amounts to be paid to each individual. And we then run them through payroll, run the reimbursements through payroll. So this avoids the taxation issues that can be, if, you know, if you're not doing it through payroll, you've got to somehow, because it's all taxable compensation. Um, so by running it through payroll, we let the withholding formulas apply and um, it, it makes it uh, fairly easy to do. Of course, there's a delay then Someone who might have done gone skiing in January and uh, submitted the claim in January, they may not have paid for that until the end of February. So um, I think what I'd like to end with is um, some advice from each of you. What advice would you give to um, other employers that are considering implementing a lifestyle spending account? Lynn, why don't you go first? My advice would be to go for it. I think it's a really neat way of increasing your compensation to your associates in a unique and fun way that uh, that is sort of what I call the gift that keeps on giving. The lifestyle account is there every year. It, you need to file for it. You need to, you, you're constantly reminded as an, as an associate that the benefit exists as opposed to what we could have done is just given everybody a $1,000 raise. And that Financially, would have accomplished the same, but you know how cash compensation is. It sort of just disappears into the ether, and they'd be looking for something else a year later. Um, but with the lifestyle account, it's increased compensation, but it's sort of constantly there for them to remember that this is a special part about working for New Balance is having access to this lifestyle account. So I would definitely recommend it uh, to any employer who's considering, you know, being a uh, uh, competitive in the uh, war for talent. And Kristen, what about you? What is your advice for employers? I like Glenn's advice about just go for it. I think that's great advice. I would say, you know, it really increases the flexibility, right? And so when you get um, questions from employees about, well, I, you know, I use the pet insurance example, right? Do you have pet insurance? Well, now you have the opportunity. It's um, with, if someone took the benefit box and the well-being incentive, they'd have the opportunity to roll $900 into this account. They can use it as a savings account. So I would say, um, right, figure out ways to fund it. But even, I mean, from the well-being dollars, we're not putting any additional money into that. It's just a different way that people can actually fund it. So get creative maybe with the funding if you're looking for um, more flexibility, but maybe you're, you're having trouble finding the finances. And then I would say, um, start small. So our intention is to continue to build what people can be reimbursed for, because what you wouldn't want to happen is to say, you know, we'll have someone who will save for an ED charger, right? That's a big expense. They continue to save for the next five years. And then all of a sudden we say, you know what, that's not going to be reimbursable, right? So make it small and manageable and then continue to grow as it continues to work with whatever your uh, benefit strategy is. I think that's great advice that both of you have shared. And um, I, I like the this topic because 
I think that lately we've all felt like we can't provide benefits for everything that everybody could possibly need. And lifestyle spending accounts definitely provide a lot more flexibility to, to move in that direction of trying to recognize that everyone has something different than they, that they need. And this is a great way to be able to fund that. So thank you both for joining us and um, we'll see everyone else in the next video. Bye.